Hi Bishop Moore, this is Mr. Wilkers. I want to wish you a very blessed third Sunday of Easter. Jesus is risen as he promised. Alleluia. And in this Easter celebration, in this Easter season, we're celebrating the new life that God gives to us. So my question for you is, whose life are you living? Remember that Jesus promised us in John chapter 10, verse 10, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. That was the, the reason that Jesus came, to give us life. So today, the underappreciated theological concept that I want to talk to you about is theosis. Theosis means sharing in God's life, becoming like God, or sharing in his nature. It's a very ancient uh, idea in the church goes all the way back to the apostles and the idea of theosis answers the question of what does salvation mean? What does redemption really mean? What does eternal life really mean? So if you look in the second letter of St. Peter chapter 1 it says that God has given us his promises so that through his power we may, we may become partakers of the divine nature or participants in the divine nature that we can participate in God's very own nature. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph one, the very first thing it wants to tell us, maybe the foundation of everything, is this. God, in a plan of sheer goodness, freely created us human persons for this reason, to make us share in his own life. That's why God created us, to share in his life. And this idea of sharing in his life is what the church calls theosis. So it's simply the fact that our human life inevitably leads to death. And it's only by sharing in God's life that we can have life that lasts forever, eternal life. And God's life is really different than the life we experience, and it's what we were made for. So oftentimes when we think about salvation, we think it's about becoming morally perfect. Um, sometimes we hear us, we hear people say it's about becoming the best version of, your, of yourself. Fair enough. Um, sometimes when we think about that, becoming really perfect or becoming the best version of ourselves, we think that's too hard or it's too much. And I say actually that's far too little, right? The problem is that we underestimate what we were created to be. We underestimate what God made us for. This mystery of what it means that God created us to share in his life means that we were created for something far greater than what we think. So what does it mean to share in God's life? We see it when we look at the heart of Jesus. So the sacred heart of Jesus, his heart was a human heart, a human heart like yours and mine, but he loved with God's own love. So if God, a divine person, can take on an ordinary human heart like ours and love everyone in the world with that heart and save the whole world with that heart, then that means your heart and my heart are capable of something far greater than what we normally imagine. In fact, we're capable of loving the way Jesus loved. How did Jesus love? John 13 verse 1 says he loved to the extreme, to the end. We're capable of loving the same way that Jesus loved if we share in his life. In fact, we don't just love like him, we love with his own love because he fills our hearts with his love. Isn't that the life that you long for? Isn't that what you know you are made for? To love without limits, without hesitation, without expectations. To love in a way that's totally self-sacrificing. That's the joy that we long for. We know that nothing else is enough for us. In fact, part of the reason the Catechism starts out saying that we are created to share in, our, in God's own life is that this is the defining characteristic of the human person. What does it mean to be human? It means that we're capable of so much more than anything else in creation. We're capable of sharing in God's love and sharing in his life. So our origin is from God's love. We are created because he loved us. Our identity is his love. What is the truth of who we are that we're capable of love? And what is our destiny? Our destiny is to someday be able to share fully in his life and love to the fullness of what God made us to be. So, a few important things to realize about theosis and the fact that God has destined you to share his life. One, you can't achieve that life on your own. It can't be earned, it can't be purchased, it can't be stolen. It can only be given, right? So for us, the most important thing we can do is to receive, to receive God's life. Secondly, that life isn't ours. Your life is not yours. The life that you have is a gift. The life that you are made for. Everything about the way God made you, everything about your, your nature is meant to be 
empty without him. It's meant to be filled up with his life. So your life is not yours. It's a gift. Your life is not about you. And that gift that God has given you of your life has to be given away. He gives it to you precisely so you can give it away. You won't be fully living it until you give it away to others. Third, how do we share in God's life? So Jesus shared in all of our realities, all of our suffering. He even shared in the reality of our death. Why did he do that? So we could share and participate in all of his realities. And where does that happen? In the sacraments of the church. In baptism, we die with Christ. We rise with him to a new life. The new life that we have because of his resurrection in this Easter season is the life of God. Most perfectly, we share in God's life in the Eucharist. Eucharist, God just doesn't send us a Hallmark card that says he loves us. He gives us his body and blood, his very own heart. He puts it in us. What does that mean? Certainly what it has to mean is that we are now capable of sharing in his life. Whatever we go out and do, we're doing it with him. He's doing it in us and through us. And that's the beauty and the power of the Eucharist. That's the meaning of everything. That's why it's the source and summit of our life. One last thing. Who has participated most perfectly in God's life? Our Blessed Mother, Mary. She participated in all the mysteries of Jesus' life, and she made his life her own. Everything Jesus did and said, everything he felt and experienced, everything that he suffered, Mary suffered all those things. She allowed all those things to enter into her heart, to form her, and everything that she lived was a sharing in Jesus' life. So she's the one that shows us the way, and it's through her intercession and her prayer that we can learn to share in God's life. So I challenge you today to step into the adventure of living not just your own life that you make for yourself, but the life that God wants to give to you. And to reflect today on what life are you really seeking, and whose life are you really living. God bless you all. Have a great third Sunday of Easter.